is my rock, my rock, my sword, and my shield. Amen? We want to say good morning to everyone. It's a blessing in be in the house of the Lord one more time. Y'all, come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Songwriter says, good to know Jesus. Everybody ought to know Jesus. It's good to know Jesus. Huh? I can sit up here all day and talk about this song and that song, but we got some work to do today. I want to sing now. We would like to ask the deacons to come around and give us our prayer and our scripture. Amen. Good morning. Once again, it's honor and a pleasure to be out there with you of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We find our scriptures this morning coming from Matthew 26, verses 25 to 30. We'll read as follows. Then Judas, one of one who betrayed him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they was eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my body. Correction. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of this vine from now on until that day when I drink it's new in you in the Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I read you from Matthew 26, verses 25 to 30. May God add a blessing. Listen to the Jews and all his words. Good morning, Mount Olive. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come again. We come, Heavenly Father, as humble as we know how, lifting up your holy name, returning unto thee some more sincere and humble thanks for the many and the many blessings that thou stored upon us. Today, as we look to the hills, we know and we realize that each and every good and perfect gift comes from thee and thee alone. We just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, for your son, Jesus, who came down through 42 generations that we may have life and life more abundantly. Bless us this day, Heavenly Father, so that we may continue to be a blessing and be a blessing unto others as we go out into the highways and hedges to proclaim your word of truth. Lord, we thank you and we praise you this day. Continue to guide and direct our path, Heavenly Father, throughout this day, throughout this service. 
we give you glory, honor, and praise in all we do. And all of God's children says amen, amen, and amen. All right, we want to thank the deacons for their scripture and their prayer. It's my understanding on next Sunday we're going to have a, what we call a full devotion. Our deacons going to be back leading like they were supposed to, okay? Amen. 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 Come on now, come on. We're trying to get back to church. I mean, thought y'all in church. Don't you want to have church? Amen. Devotion is a part of church. It gets you ready for your other part of your meal. Huh? In other words, it's your appetizer. And our appetizer used to be pretty daggone good. So y'all come on and have some church this morning. Y'all get ready. I mean, if you ain't got nothing in the bank, you know, you can't take nothing out. But you can at least go to the bank. Yeah, y'all, they a little slow this morning. Y'all a little slow this morning. I don't need nobody to pep me up because Jesus has been good to me. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Now, if you've been good to you, you shouldn't have to take nobody to lift you up about it. You ought to have a word of your own. You ought to have a testimony of your own. You ought to know something about the man named Jesus. Shouldn't nobody have to tell you about him all the time. You ought to be happy that you're here today. Let me, I'm going to tell you like this. If you don't think he done done nothing for you, look around. You're here right about now. Somebody want to be in church now and can't be in church. But he gave us a little more power, a little more help, a little more strength to get out of that old bed this morning. Amen? Y'all come on and have a little church then. Come on, choir.
on me. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. Jesus said that. I won't let you fall if you lean on me. He didn't say go ahead and call Oprah Winfrey first. Huh? He didn't say nothing about talking to Judge Steve. But he said if you lean on me. See that's one of our problems. We want to lean on everybody else. Instead of leaning on Jesus. See now I can understand it when you was a child. Because the word said when I, when I was a child I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. So you need to learn how to pray for yourself and lean on Jesus. Am I right about it now? So I won't let you fall if you lean on me. I, I like that. Y'all come on, give us just a little bit more. Y'all don't mind giving us a little bit more. Huh? Somebody need to know that you can lean on Jesus and he won't let you fall. Y'all come on now. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all Mount Olive's members and our virtual families near and far. The way it's done here, the gospel will be preached, the sick will be prayed for, and most of all, an invitation to Christ will be extended to you. These are our weekly announcements. Join us every Wednesdays in the Word for a Bible study via Facebook virtual or here at the Mount Olive Church Sanctuary each Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Many of you might have received a text link to our Remind app this week. It's not a scam or if you don't know what it is, it's a remind, just in case, if you would like to receive a group text message regarding bereavements, announcements, Bible study cancellation, it's just for outgoing text from one person. We will not send you a chain of texts, and we also will not receive it from you guys. But anything from the pastor's desk that we think that you should be aware of, you will get a text message. If you would like to be a part of the group Remind Text, please see myself, Keisha J Jacobs, or the media team. The group Remind Text. Thank you. Also remember, we always have three ways to give. We thank you each Sunday for continuing to sow a seed in this ministry and help us grow. You can give online with the Givelify app. You can still mail it into our post office box, which is listed on the screen, and it has to be typed the same way it's listed on the screen, 2720 Panther Parkway, P.O. Box 728, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Or tithes and offerings can be dropped off here during the morning worship service or in person from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m.
Blessings on your birthdays and anniversaries for the month of April. This senior, Amari Peabody, he celebrated a birthday on April 6th. He also, you know, have a scholarship to go to play football at West Point. Happy birthday, Amari. All right, Brother Homer King also celebrated a birthday this month. We see you, Homer, and we hope you have a wonderful birthday and you're still lifting in our prayers. Also, this young gentleman, Brother Edgar Adams, also celebrated a birthday this month. We would like to personally thank you for your dedication and commitment here at Mount Olive. It's truly valuable. Happy birthday, Brother Adams. Okay, this young gentleman, he's not celebrating a birthday, but he's celebrating another milestone. I know you probably noticed that you see him here a lot now. Deacon Sonny Stringer is also celebrating his retirement of 33 glorious years at Southern Company. Congratulations on your standout career and best wishes for you on your retirement of 33 years. All right, that concludes our weekly announcements. God be the glory. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Uh, it's just good to be here, isn't it? Amen. I'm excited about being here, and I'm also excited about seeing you here. Amen. Amen. That says a lot. Come on, let's give God some praise because of you. You're here. And uh, all of you, all of you, amen. Let us bow announcement and keep them in mind. Amen. All of the anniversaries and the birthday. Amen. We thank God for what he allowing us to do. Amen. And be. Amen. And let us continue to pray for all of our sick and our shut-ins. Amen. Amen. Uh, I got a call from Sister Carolyn Ogletree this morning. And uh, she said she has one more treatment to undergo on tomorrow. And that will be it her for the treatments concerned. So she's doing pretty good. Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Also, very good to see Deacon Martha here. Amen. I know you had a procedure the other, other week or so. You're here this morning. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm excited. Amen. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. As the songwriter said, one more time. Amen. Not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. But this is the day. So come on, somebody. This is the day that the Lord have made. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice. Yeah, yeah. And, and be glad in it. Amen. I, I heard Minister, uh, Minister Byron say, yeah, that somebody wants to be in church but unable to be here. Amen. But you are here. You are here. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our media team. Amen. Let's, let's praise God for this choir. I won't let you fall. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Let us, let us continue to stay safe. Let us continue to practice, you know, social distancing and what have you. It's not over. Uh, COVID is, is still around. Amen. And, and it's still calling the road. Amen. It's still calling the road. What have you? And so we still have to be, you know, proactive uh, in trying to keep it of ourselves safe. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Sister King and also Brother Brother King. Amen. Continue to keep them in your prayers. Continue to keep them in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Well, 
choir, y'all got another selection? Y'all ready? All right, give them a hand as they come. Somehow 
make a way. He'll 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 make a way. I know he'll make a way. He'll make a way. I know he'll make a way. He'll make a way. I know he'll make a way. you know but you know that you know that you know that you know that he he will make a way somehow I heard you when you said he may not come when you want him to come but he always all time do I have any witnesses up in here know that he'll show up in your life and then not only show up he'll show out he'll show out come on hey 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 he'll show up Yes, sir. Oh, God Almighty. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. I don't know because I tried it for myself. God Almighty. You, you, you. You are a living testimony. That's how you know that he will make a way somehow. Good God Almighty. Ooh. Lord have mercy. But when you know him for yourself, I heard what you said, Minister Week. You shouldn't have to pump nobody up. But when you know him for yourself, man, when, when you know God for yourself, you just get up. You just and you ain't got to wait on somebody. Come on, get no. I know him for myself. Matter of fact, they started way before then. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Lord have mercy. Don't 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 y'all go to sleep on us. Don't 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 you go to sleep on us. I, I want us to be a blessing to this atmosphere. Now, if you're in here and you think you're too cool, calm, and collective, God Almighty, something wrong with that picture. Have I got a witness here? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise be unto God. Power and dominion be unto thee. Oh, God, we bless your name. For you alone are worthy to be praised. I, I just want to be a blessing in this atmosphere. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Well, what is the highest praise, preacher? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all got it? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. God, man, you just let the spirit flow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
We bless your name, Jesus. We adore you on the day, Lord. Lord, because you've been so good yes. to us. You made ways out of nowhere. Let me know when I come down your road. You woke me up this morning. Close me in my right mind. I didn't put my shoes on my head. God Almighty. And then put my hat on my feet. But you closed me in my right mind. And I just want to tell the world, Lord, I thank you. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good to me. Made ways out of no way. I'm not the only one, man. I ought to have some witnesses up in here. Just, just, just let, let go and let God. Then God fix it for you. Hey, you, you Lord. Somebody ain't told him thank you all week long. Thank, woo, just tell him thank you. Yeah. Lord. Yeah, yeah, tell it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. That's all I want to do is tell it. Thank you. Why? Why am I telling him thank you? Why am I telling him thank you? Here it is. You've been so so good. He been good, y'all. Yeah. You been so good. If Sister King were here, she would tell you that. If she was here right now, she would. You been da, 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 da. So You may, yeah. Uh, Brother Gerard Broker will tell you that. Sister Precious Weeks will tell you that. Sister Josephine Fraser will tell you that. Sister Maddie Moore will tell you that. Away. that Easter is on next Sunday um, and we will be doing um, treat bags, giving out treat bags to the, all the youth uh, on behalf of the, all the youth advisors. Uh, we're asking everyone to please bring their youth out so Amen. we can give them their treat bags. Please, uh, if you know anyone that has a youth that comes to this church, please ask them to bring them, please, so we can Amen. give them their treat bags. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Easter is on next Sunday, so please, ma'am, Please, sir, if your child, your grandchild, amen, great-grandchild, they don't drive, amen, uh, please, please, please bring your children to church next week. And, and don't let that be the only Sunday. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's, let's continue this, okay? Amen. And if, 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 if some of our youth are listening to me right now and you drive, you're on virtual Facebook, 
If you can drive everywhere else, drive to church on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for all that have transpired. God, we thank you for your mighty hand. We thank you for your marvelous work and your word. We thank you for your presence. God, we thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness and your righteousness. We thank you for it all, Master. Realizing that we can't do nothing without you, but with you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And God, we just want to say thank you. Father, we ask it all now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation, Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. We're going to pick it up in our series. You don't love me no more, part two. You don't love me no more, part two. Picking it up at verse 5, and it reads as follows. I'm reading from the NIV version. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. From its place, unless you repent. Verse 6, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Verse 7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes. I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. May be seated in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You know, last week, uh, on the outset of our series, You Don't Love Me No More, part one, we brought to you and we allowed you to see the recipients of who God was talking to. He was talking to the ministers. He was talking to the churches. And not only the ministers and the churches, but those who would have an ear to hear. Amen? And not only that, after I allowed you to see the recipients, we talked about the commendation that the Lord God gave them. He commended them. On certain things, he, you know, he said, "No, you, you labor, and thy patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil." So they had a lot of good things going on, and he commended them, amen. And then we went on to show you, in verse four, uh, the complaint that he had against this church. Verse four said, "Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, which brings about our theme, because thou hast left." thy first love. In other words, you, you had it going on. You was doing everything, so to speak, uh, right except one thing. You left me out of the equation. Amen. I understand that you had your programs and you had all of this going on and your rituals and what have you and you couldn't stand the sight or uh, bear to hear those who was considered false prophets. I admire that about you. But nevertheless, you, you left me out of the equation. In other words, you, you put me on the back burner of your life. Uh -huh. That's why he had to remind us uh, to remember. See, not, not that you're not saved, but first things first. And if, if you love God, then you ought to be able to love mankind. But he said before that can happen and transpire, you got to put me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and everything else uh, uh -huh, will be added unto thee. Now, verse 5 would have us to know 
it would give us the counsel. He, he, he tells the church, remember and repent. Return to your first works and your former service. What, what is he saying? As, as the Lord counsels them, uh, he, he tells them, uh, when you as a church, as a believer, goes astray, the Lord, he will issue a warning. The Lord will counsel you. And that's a good thing that God counsels us. Uh -huh. Because he, he don't have to do it, but because he loves us. God wants to see us restored. He wants to see us brought back. Uh -huh. You know, there's a song that says, take me back, oh Lord, to the place where I first uh -huh, met you. In other words, God is trying to bring us back from whence we came because a lot of times we forget where we come from. We put everything else and everybody else before him. And so God has to somehow and some way counsel us. In other words, get us back to loving him. And so the Lord, he, he issues this, this very same call that he issues here. He says, return. Wow, return. Now, there are at least three steps are involved in returning. First, Remember from where you have fallen. Just, just think back. What was it that caused you to stumble? What was it that caused you to go astray? What was it that caused you to lose your fervor and your fire for God? What was it? Was it some person, some thing, or was it some place? What is it? What, what caused you to bring about a wedge or a hedge between you and God? Only you and you alone know that. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot tell you and you cannot tell me. Only you and you alone, me, myself, and I. I know we should just think back and say, I, I went wrong somewhere. Something along the line. I, I, I dropped the ball. In other words, uh, I forsook God. I, I, I left him out of my life. What was it that caused you to fall out of love with God? What was it? Only you can answer that. See? He says in that verse, you, you got to remember where you have fallen. Think back over your former love for the Lord. Just think back how you was once on fire for him. God Almighty. That was nothing that could separate you from the love of God. You, you was on fire for God. You was ready to do things for God. You went here, there, and the other. And you love people how God has prescribed for us to love ye one another. But something happened. You got so involved and tangled up with other things and everybody else. And you left God out of the equation. First of all, you got to remember his presence. Remember his presence. That feeling of warmth and tenderness. Do you remember that? How you was... You, you, you was filled with so much zeal and, and your spirit was oozing with love for one another and for God. And now, all of a sudden now, it's become darkened. It's like a shadow is going over your head. It's like the clouds are moving slowly over your head. And now you can't find the strength to do what God has called you to do. And now coming to church is just a routine thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you, you're not coming to get the word of God and then go out and spread this gospel. You're just coming just to be coming. Could be that you have fallen out of love with God. You remember that fellowship and that communion you once had with him. What about, what about that prayer and sharing? Oh, how you used to pray. Yeah. Oh, how you used to pray with fervor and fire. How you loved God and how nothing would separate you from him. That was nothing that you wouldn't do for God. But now it's like everything else have captured your attention. You have put God on the back burner of your life. You got to remember his presence and your consciousness. You got to remember that awareness of his presence. Do you remember that joy you once had? That's what he's telling this church. You, you once had that joy. Couldn't nobody beat you in talking about uh, uh -huh, experiencing joy. You had the joy 
Oh, what joy you had for me. Oh, God, I can see God say, oh, and how it made me feel good just to see you. Oh, yeah, how I bragged on you. Oh, yeah, that's my daughter. Yeah, that's my son. They have the joy of the Lord because they know that I gave them that joy. And now they have allowed the world to zap it from them. That's what he's saying. That's, that's why he's counseling them. God is trying to get them back. You got to remember from where you have fallen. And then after you remember that, you got to repent. Uh-oh. Repent. In other words, Lord, I recognize that I have fallen out of love with you. I'm more in love with my job than you. I, 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 I'm in love with my, more with my house, my car, my money, my possessions of life. Lord, I repent. I repent. In other words, turn away from whatever has pulled you away from Christ and turn back to Christ because something has drawn you away. And I know dealing with life and going through life and dealing with the issues of life, sometimes it, it causes heartaches and pain. And after you experience so much heartache and pain after a while and discouragement, it draws you away to some degree. But that ought to be the time to where you get a little closer. Get a little closer to God. Get a little closer to you. I know for two years we were separated with the COVID, Omicron, and all, and, and it's still here. And we're still separated to some degree, but we're trying to maneuver and come back together. But in the midst of being separated, you still ought to have a prayer life. You, you still ought to have had communion with God. See, and fellowshipping with God. See, communing with God. Talking to God. See, see something has pulled you away. You, you are attached to something more than you are to Christ. What is it? Something is consuming your thoughts and your energies and keeping your mind from focusing upon him, Christ. That's what he's telling this church. Something has drawn you away. You know I know you. That's what he's saying. I know you. You're not yourself lately. Something has happened. Now you mine. You belong to me. So you need to get your act together, church. Get yourself together because you don't love me no more. <laughs> the fellowshipping and communing with him. You, now you, your mind is somewhere else. See, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side. Could that be you? Could that be me? Oh, yes, come to church. Yes, here physically with our bodies, but our, our mind is somewhere else. Our mind is somewhere else. On yesterday. On what I'm going to do today after church. Could be on that promotion you may be getting next week on your job. You have fallen out of love with me. And not only that, he says, you got to do the first works that you did. In other words, you got to refocus. And then he said, you got to just take a moment to pray. Do this all day long, every day. You're, there'll not be a time or a day that goes by that you, you, don't, you don't tell God thank you. Lord, Short prayer, Lord, I thank you. That's a prayer. You mean it from your heart? Lord, I thank you for another day's journey. I thank you. Especially when you look around and see what's happening. 
and you read the newspaper and -and so-and-so is going on, she's going on, he's going on, and you're still here, Lord, I thank you. So he counsels them. See? Take set times to get along with Christ and study his word and pray. Wow. Begin to walk just as Christ would walk. If he were walking by your side, step by step, hour by hour. Remember him. Consider him. And so he counsels them. But then also, he he warns them. Look, verse 5, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first work, or else, uh uh-oh, I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. Now, what was the lampstand? Who is that? What is that? The church. I remove you. God is saying, I, you know, I love you. God knows I love you. I, I don't have to have you because there's somebody down down the road, you know, who, who loves me a little more than you. See, you you've been perpetrating. You you you've been may lacking. You you've been acting. One time I thought I was in Hollywood. Oh, but I got a few members down the street now, perhaps. They ain't got no big membership. About four or five of them. But God Almighty, they on fire for the Lord. See what I'm saying? Because he always say, there's danger in a crowd. There's danger in a big crowd. You got to have no crowd of folks. You rest assured the devil is lurking somewhere in that crowd. Just give me a few that has their heart set on fire for me and loves me for who I am. And so the warning, he issues this warning to this church for losing their love for him. See, but he said, remove the church from being a true church. What do you mean? From being a true representative of Christ upon earth. Remove the church. From being a church of God's true kingdom, move the church. From being in touch and in union with God, move in the church. That's what he means. From being a true light and witness to the world. From being a church of the gospel of God. Ooh, that's a bad position to be in. Lord, don't move your hand off of me. Hold me in your hand, Lord. Moving the church. What about from his presence, from the light of his presence? This is a terrible judgment to be moved from God. Isn't it? Think about it. To be moved from God. You can't feel God no more. No matter how you try, no matter how hard you try, you can't feel the presence of God no more. That's a terrible judgment. I don't know about you, but I want to feel his presence. I, I want to I feel, I want to feel that love. See, that's what he's talking about. When he said falling, taking the church out, remove him from being a true church and not being a true light and a witness to the world. He'll give you, allow you to have that false light. Mm-mm-mm. Just think about how many churches have been removed by Christ. How many churches are lifeless? They are dull. Think about it. They ain't got nothing going on. Lack the presence of Christ in the services. That's why I always say when you come here, you ought to get into the presence of the Lord. And it shouldn't matter who looking at you, who watching you. You, you, you stop by Mount Olive to get yours. Amen. Because nobody knows what you've been going through the whole week. Nobody but you. Lord, if I could just tell you some of the things I didn't go through through the week. And so, no, I, I didn't come here to sit up here and look cute. Uh-uh. No, no, I didn't come here to sit up and look cute. No, I'm not at a, a beauty, beauty parlor, ladies. Or, uh, I'm not sitting in the chair to get a haircut or groomed or what have you. 
I'm not at a fashion show. Come on, somebody. Because all of us, I know we say we're living on bought time, borrowed time. No, no, but we're living on grace time and mercy time. That's the time we're living on. So that's why I come to give God praise. Amen. Yes, he gives them a warning. Yes, doctrinal purity was not enough because, yes, they would uh -huh, check the preacher if, we, if he was considered to be a false prophet, did not preach Jesus, death, the burial, and the resurrection, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They would put him in check. But still, that wasn't enough. You left your first love. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters, we must understand. That's what the Nicolaitans were saying. They had stood ever so strongly against the Nicolaitans. The Bible does not give clear definition of who they were. But it is thought that they did stress two things. That Christ had done away with the law of the Old Testament and had instituted the law of Christian liberty. Hmm. What else did they say? That the soul and the spirit of man was far more important than his body. Huh? Well, that's strange because the result of this doctrine is, is clearly seen. If there is no law to govern us, uh-oh, you know what we would do. Then we can do what we like just so we profess to believe in Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in Christ. I profess Christ, but I'm going to do my own thing. No, no, no. And so we know that's, that's not true what they were thinking, but if the spirit is what really matters, then I can do what I like with my body just so I take care of my spirit. No. You got to love the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, all that matters. Can't have one without the other. See what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. So as he's warned them, and then he comes along, he gives them a promise. Look at verse 7. Verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. You see that? Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So what are you saying? Everybody is not going to partake of that. Hmm? I'm going to prove it to you. The Ephesian church had preached and taught against the error, yes. But you must understand, you can teach that, but if it's not about Christ, it ain't about nothing. Have I got a witness here? And so when we look at Matthew's gospel, chapter 5, verse 17, look, what did it say? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. But to what? To fulfill. You see the Nicolaitans. They taught the very opposite. The very opposite. See. And then when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And that the spirit. That is talking about the spirit. Now God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy but the temple of God is what? Holy. Which temple ye are? Wow, I should have asked the question. Which temple ye are? Wow. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Uh-oh. To let you know that you don't belong to yourself. For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your what? Body. And what else? In your spirit. Which are whose? God. See? We belong to God. See? You can't just do it with the body and leave the spirit out. And you can't just do it with the spirit then leave the body out. See? It's a combination. But he says, yes, he gives them this promise. The word overcomer has the idea of conflict and struggle. 
The overcomer is a person who overcomes and conquers and gains the victory. He is the victor and conqueror. But what is it that he is to overcome? Teach, Pastor. Everything that pulls his heart and love away from Christ and attaches it to the world. Can you see yourself in that? Hmm? I'm looking at myself. I'm talking to me too. <laughs> whatever possessions, whatever pleasures, whatever it is that has dampened the believer's first love for Christ, it is that thing that the believer must overcome. Mm -hmm. Wow. The overcomer shall be allowed to eat of the tree of life. This is the tree of God, the tree that gives life, both the fullness of life and eternal life. Tree of life is seen first in the Garden of Eden. But you know, of course, Adam lost his right to eat of it because of his sin and disobedience to God. Thus he was what? Banished from the garden and cut off from eating of the tree. Uh oh. Now, now I'm I'm, I'm gonna close with this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and try to hoop a little bit and let you out here, just a little bit. I'm gonna celebrate just a little bit. Okay. All right. That that's what we do. Now, now the, the the tree of life is given to the faithful. I'm trying to teach you a little bit first. Okay. And victorious follower of Christ. Uh oh, but here's some, somebody going to have a problem with this. But it is not guaranteed. Can I bag that up with scripture? Only some have a right to it. Talking about that tree of life now. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates and to the city. What? Blessed are they that what? Do his commandments. Mm. And the tree may have been taken away. Revelation 22 and 19. And if it, any man shall take away from what? The words of the book of this prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So you can't add to it or take away. So it's not guaranteed, but it depends on you. Have I got a witness here? And so, yes, the overcomer, he shall, she shall possess Oh, yes, this citizenship of God in heaven. What is that? Paradise is heaven. The very dwelling place of God. The place of eternal bliss and ecstasy. Oh, yes, it is the place of eternal perfection of life. It is eternal fulfillment and completeness of eternal love and joy. It is the place of eternal peace and control. And not only that, it is the place of eternal work and pleasure. My God, and it is the place of eternal duty and honor and of service and satisfaction. And my Lord, and, and I don't know about y'all, but uh, one day I want to be there in paradise. My Lord, and this is the part where we all can come together and celebrate a little bit. Uh, I want to be there to see my God's face. Have I got a witness here? Some of you are saying, I got a, a mama over there. I got a father over there. I got a sister over there. I got a brother over there, and that's well and good. But I want to see Jesus. My Lord, he's the one I tell you that hung, bled, and died for me. I don't care for my sins and for yours. 
Can I get a witness here? And I need somebody here this morning. If you don't mind, help me celebrate for a little while. Ain't the Lord all right? I need someone to help me give God praise and to give God glory. Anyhow, yes, Lord. I need someone. If you don't mind, if you ain't too cool and debonair, if you stand on your feet and help me preach, I'll be out of your hair. I got a witness here. But I just want to lift up Jesus for a minute or two now because he is up there. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. He's the one that came down from heaven. He came from glory, I tell you, down here on planet Earth to die for my sins and to die for your sins. Have I got a witness here? And he died, I tell him. He shed his blood, I tell you. But what I love about it the most is he didn't stay dead. He got up on that third day morning. Have I got a witness here? God raised him up out of that grave. And he went on back to the Father. And now he's sitting at the right hand of Jesus. Can I get a witness here? Yes. 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 Just for a little while. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. I was trying to get to that from the beginning there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> my bread in a stormy land, my shelter in the storm. He's everything I need, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's somebody here know him to be a lawyer in the courtroom, a water in dry places. Is it anybody here know that he'll heal your body? Is it anybody here know? That he'll meet your need. Is there anybody here? No, he'll go all the way with you. Yes, he will. Hey! Ain't the Lord all right? I wish somebody help me preach and get the word out there. Oh, Lord. He is Lord of Lord. He is King of Kings. He is my everything. He's a doctor in a sick room yes he is he's everything and more oh yes everything I need is it anybody here know that every now and then he'll walk with you every step of the way he'll go all the way with you he won't do like some folks leave you part of the way but he'll walk with you and every now and then, wait a minute now, you, I'm talking to you. He'll talk with you, tell you that you are his own. Yeah! And I get happy about that. Yeah! Won't he do it? If he'll do it, I want you to help me holler, preacher. I want you to holler if you know that Lord will make a way somehow. Won't he make a way? Won't he do it? He will. He will make a way. I love him because he first loved me. Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. We're going to open the door right quick, like. Door to God, house is open. The songwriter said, I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pitied my every groan. Yes, will that be one? You're here and you're not saved. I want to make that clear first. If you're here, you like to come and be a part of this ministry, you can come and be a part of this ministry. But if you're already a member, 
you're already saved. And you just need a special little prayer. We want to intercede on behalf of everyone in here. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you have been through. Don't know what you're getting ready to go through. Three phases to a storm. You're getting ready to go in your storm, or you're in your storm, or you're on your way out of your storm. But best believe, you got a storm. But isn't it good to know that you have someone who's in the midst of the storm with you? God Almighty, we bless his name today. Come on, choir. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my if you're listening brother, by Facebook, virtual, we, offer Christ we pray to that wherever you, you are, oh, my sister, that you have been helped, you have been inspired. But if you're listening, and looking at me and you have not been saved. Life, you can be saved today. Life you want to accept Christ as your Lord and so Savior. Come. You can go to our website. Come and you can put in AC, accept Christ. Unto Christ. You can also put on our website HS, Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit moved we all on you today. To you, oh my brother, or you can type on our website, be a born again. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. Because he'll do this for you. He'll give you a brand new life. He will give you brand new life. Life abundantly. something has been said to you cause you to become better. We all got room for improvement to become better. Amen. For the cause of Christ. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want nothing to separate me from the love of God because God has been too good to me. I can only speak for myself. Amen. And I'm not the only one that he's been good to. No, no. I'm not the only one. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray for our sick and our shut in. Uh, the bereaved families of this community, stay close to one another. Stay close to one another. How can I do that and we can't come together like we want to? In prayer. Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. Mention your brother or your sister name in your prayer. You may not know the condition they're in, but God already knows. So if you just call their name, that's enough. He, he already know how to fix their situation. His name is above cancer. 
His, yes, that's right. His name is above everything. And so do, do that. Do that for one another. I love you, Mount Olive. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I always say, and I mean that. I love you. I love you. Good God Almighty, I love you. And I'm telling you, wow, I still have the wind in my body. I love you, and I mean it. I mean it. And like Pastor Samuel always say, ain't nothing you can do about it. Didn't he, didn't he say that? Yeah, he said that. Yes, and I miss him so much. All hearts and minds clear. Thank God for you ministers. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. The CI deacons. Amen. Our ushers, this choir, the musicians, media team, all of you. Just good to see y'all. Amen. I know I'm supposed to get a benediction, but I just want to look at you a little while long. They want to look at you. <laughs> they want to look at you. I love you. <laughs> Glad to have my wife with me today. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you. Thank you for your presence and your power. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for your mighty hand and thank you for the move of the spirit. And we pray and hope that we brought glory to your name, Father. Pray, God, that your people were edified and you glorified. And Father, we thank you now. Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Now may the grace of God and sweet communion, Holy Spirit, rest rule in the Bible be with you all henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen, amen, and hallelujah. Go in peace. Love y'all.